Many people, particularly in the United States, often use the term Mexican to refer broadly to someone's race or ethnicity. This generalization is problematic because it oversimplifies and misrepresents the complex racial and ethnic diversity found in Mexico, among Mexican Americans, and throughout Latin America. Such language fails to accurately reflect the intricate realities of these regions. There is a widespread but incorrect belief that all individuals living south of the United States border are uniformly brown or share a common ancestry. This stereotype is highly inaccurate and overlooks the rich tapestry of cultures, ethnicities and origins present in Latin American countries. Understanding why this perception is flawed requires a closer look at the historical and social dynamics that have shaped these societies. Race in Latin America is a nuanced and multifaceted subject. Unlike in the United States, where racial categories are often more distinctly defined, though still complex, the boundaries between different racial groups in Latin America are less clear-cut. This complexity stems in part from the historical systems of racial hierarchy imposed by Portuguese and Spanish colonizers. These colonial powers established social structures that encouraged individuals to identify in certain ways or to marry partners of specific classes or races. The legacies of these practices continue to influence societal attitudes and personal identities in many Latin American countries today. Acknowledging this intricate history is crucial for fostering a more accurate and respectful understanding of race and ethnicity in Latin America. By challenging oversimplified narratives and stereotypes, it becomes possible to appreciate the true diversity and richness of these regions. The hierarchical system used to elevate or demote individuals within the spectrum of racial subjugation in colonial Latin America was known as the Casta system. This structure was a variation of the South Asian caste system, which was also largely hereditary and based on class and family lineage, determining people's roles and statuses in society. Latin America is commonly defined today as all the Spanish and Portuguese-speaking countries in North and South America. However, the term often has a flexible interpretation. If one were to ask the average U.S. citizen about the location of Latin America, they might simply assume it encompasses all territories south of the U.S. border, which is understandable given the geographical proximity. The region boasts some of the most racially diverse populations on the planet, with no single racial group comprising more than 40% of the total population. The first significant shift in the racial composition of Latin America began immediately after Christopher Columbus landed in the Americas in 1492. Depending on one's perspective or country of residence today, Columbus is viewed either as a courageous explorer or a controversial figure driven by greed. Regardless of these differing opinions, the subsequent colonization and mass migration initiated by Europeans were truly unprecedented. This era permanently altered the demographic and cultural landscapes of every region on the continent. Even though the majority of Latin American territories achieved independence by the mid-1800s, the complexities of the caste system persisted deeply influencing politics, culture and race relations in the newly formed nations. Although slavery was abolished relatively early in most Latin American countries, a substantial population of people of African descent remained in the region. Due to their historical association with slavery, they were placed at or near the bottom of the social hierarchy. Above them were the Native Americans, or Amerindians, who initially made up a significant portion of the population. However, as increasing numbers of European settlers arrived and many Amerindians began to assimilate into the burgeoning multiracial society, they gradually became a minority in their own homeland and found themselves near the lower end of the social ladder as well. Various groups of mixed-race descent such as individuals who were half Native American and half European, or half African and half European, were typically positioned somewhere in between. 
They possessed more rights than the full-blooded groups mentioned earlier, but were still not at the top of the hierarchy. At the pinnacle were Europeans of Spanish descent who held the most privileges. Interestingly, within this elite group, those born in Europe were considered superior to pure-blooded whites born in the colonies where they resided. This distinction underscored a preference for European-born individuals over those of the same heritage born in the New World, affecting social standing and access to opportunities. The legacy of the caste system had lasting effects on Latin American societies. It established a complex social structure that influenced individual identities and dictated social mobility. Understanding this system is crucial for comprehending the historical and contemporary dynamics of race and class in Latin America. The Spanish colonizers not only established a strict racial hierarchy in their New World territories, but also devised specific names for the new racial groups that emerged from intermixing. Individuals of mixed Native American and European descent were called mestizos, a term that literally means mixed in Spanish. Those who were of mestizo and European ancestry were known as castizos, while people of mixed mestizo and Native American heritage were referred to as cholos. This classification extended to dozens of different racial combinations, reflecting the complex social stratification the Spanish imposed. The Spanish were overt about their dominance in this system and made it clear that they occupied the highest social tier. This attitude of superiority can be traced back to the history of the Iberian Peninsula, comprising modern-day Spain and Portugal, which was occupied for several centuries by the Moors, a Muslim people of North African origin. The prolonged occupation by a non-European, non-Christian group led the Christian kingdoms of Europe to unite in efforts to reclaim their territories, a period known as the Reconquista. This historical context may have contributed to a heightened sense of racial and religious superiority among the Spanish, which they carried over to their colonies. Moving beyond this complex history, it's important to understand how it has shaped the diverse appearances of modern Latin Americans. The region exhibits an incredible range of physical features, to the point where members of the same family might appear to belong to different racial groups. This diversity arises because there is no singular Latin American look. Instead, the population is composed of a multitude of racial and ethnic backgrounds. As previously mentioned, the largest demographic in Spanish-speaking Latin America consists of mestizos who are of mixed Native American and European descent. They are followed by populations identifying as European, Amerindian and African. However, these categories are fluid and overlapping due to centuries of intermarriage and cultural blending, making it challenging to neatly assign individuals to specific groups. The term mestizo is theoretically used for someone who is 50% European and 50% Native American. In reality, genetic makeup is far more complex because of continuous intermixing over generations. A person identifying as mestizo might have anywhere from 40% to 60% European or Native American ancestry. Studies conducted in countries like Mexico and Chile have found correlations between socio-economic status and genetic ancestry. Mestizos of lower economic standing often have a higher percentage of Native American DNA, while wealthier individuals tend to have a greater proportion of European ancestry. This intricate tapestry of heritage highlights the fluidity of racial identity in Latin America. The historical blending of cultures and peoples has resulted in a rich diversity that defies simple classification. Understanding this complexity is essential for appreciating the multifaceted identities that exist within Latin American societies today. The complexity of racial admixture in Latin America becomes even more pronounced when accounting for significant populations from other parts of the world, such as those of Middle Eastern and North African descent. Surprisingly, Latin America hosts the largest number of people with Middle Eastern ancestry outside of the Middle East itself. Countries like Brazil, Argentina, 
Chile and Mexico have substantial communities of Palestinians, Lebanese and Syrians, surpassing the numbers found in Europe or the United States. Additionally, there is a considerable presence of East Asians in the region, particularly individuals of Japanese and Chinese heritage. Brazil, for instance, has the highest number of ethnic Japanese outside of Japan, exceeding even the United States in this regard. In Peru, up to 15% of the population has some Chinese ancestry, often integrated within the mestizo communities. Mestizos from countries such as Mexico, Panama, Colombia and Venezuela may also possess a small degree of African ancestry, stemming from the relatively small number of African brought to these regions. The distinction between self-identified Europeans and mestizos is often blurred, making classifications challenging. Although rates of genetic admixture vary considerably by country and region, studies have shown that the average Latin American who identifies as white has approximately 75% to 85% European ancestry. The remaining percentage is typically a mix of Amerindian, African or Middle Eastern DNA. This overlap leads to a significant number of individuals who could identify either as white or mestizo, which explains the wide variations in estimates of the white population in Latin America. For example, estimates of self-identified whites in Mexico range from as low as 5% to as high as 30%, highlighting the fluidity of racial identity in the region. There remains, however, a large number of people of full European descent, especially in the southern cone countries like Brazil, Uruguay, Argentina and Chile, which received substantial numbers of European immigrants. Groups such as Middle Easterners, Jews and Romani may or may not self-identify as European, depending on the cultural context and country they reside in. The situation becomes even more complex when significant waves of immigrants from Latin America arrive in the United States. The U.S. has traditionally maintained a more strict and limited definition of whiteness, while having a more flexible standard for those identifying as racial minorities. For instance, individuals of mixed black and white ancestry in the United States often identify solely as African American, reflecting different societal attitudes toward race and identity. In the context of the U.S. Census, individuals of mixed racial heritage often present challenges to conventional classification systems. For instance, people who are half white and half Native American identify solely as Native American approximately 70% of the time. This trend has historically puzzled census officials who were unaccustomed to dealing with large numbers of individuals with such diverse racial backgrounds. In response, they categorized anyone from Spanish or Portuguese-speaking regions of the Americas under the broad labels Hispanic or Latino. This generalization overlooks the complex reality of racial and ethnic identities, especially considering that individuals from Spain are included in the Hispanic group despite being European, while people of Portuguese descent are often classified differently. The U.S. Census defines Hispanic or Latino as an ethnicity, not a race. While it allows individuals to select from primary racial categories such as white, black, Asian or Native American, there is no specific option for mestizo. This term represents a significant portion of Hispanics in their home countries who are of mixed European and Native American descent. Although the census offers a two or more races option for those of mixed ancestry, this does not fully address the issue. The majority of Latin American mestizos in the United States do not perceive themselves as multiracial, but rather as a distinct race, mestizo. This is similar to how modern Central Asians do not consider themselves mixed race, despite having ancestry from East Asia, the Middle East and Europe as their gene pool has blended into a cohesive identity. Most mestizos do not view themselves simultaneously as European and Native American, but as a separate racial group altogether. 
This explains why only about 6% of Hispanics and Latinos in the United States select the two or more races category. Instead, many with mestizo heritage often choose the some other race option on census forms. Additionally, some may not be familiar with the term mestizo, instead using terms like moreno, which is commonly used to describe Latinos with darker skin tones. The complexity of race and ethnicity in Latin America and among Latinos in the United States is indeed intricate. However, this complexity underscores the importance of taking the time to learn about and understand these diverse identities. Recognizing this helps in appreciating why using broad terms like Hispanic, Latino or Mexican to refer to someone's race is not only oversimplified but also inaccurate. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.